With OSPF version 3 for IPv6, there have been some tweaks to existing LSAs and the creation or addition of brand new LSAs that didn't exist with IPv4. And that's what we're going to talk about and discuss and lab up in this nugget. So before we're done, we'll identify what those two new LSA types are and where they exist, and more importantly, why they exist. So if we're familiar with OSPF, we know that LSA type ones are a router LSA. So a router who generates a router LSA is talking about itself. These are my links. This is my world. And it shares that. And that link state advertisement stays in the area it was generated. And then where we have designated routers, where there's two or more devices on that multi-axis segment, the designated router is going to generate an LSA type two called a network LSA. So those two LSAs, they've been tweaked a little bit. They don't carry quite as much information as they used to. In fact, the router and the network LSA, they don't actually specify the IP address or the prefix for that network anymore. So where do you, <laughs> if you're advertising your links and say, I've got these two links and the designated router is saying, yeah, I'm connected to this network segment with these four other routers, somewhere we have to have the information about what the actual networks are. And that's why they created an LSA type nine. And an LSA type nine is an intra, meaning within the area, intra area prefix LSA. So what that means is that every router in this area, area two, is gonna have LSA type nines that are describing all the networks. So if we investigate and looked at all the LSA type nines in this area, what we would see is the actual networks. So we'd see the 2001 DB8 678368 network. We'd see the 2001 DB8 678368 network. We'd see the 2001 DB8 678346 network, all included in these LSA type nines that are describing the actual networks themselves. That information about the actual prefixes has been removed from the LSA type ones and type twos. Although they still exist and are still important, we are look to the LSA type nines to give us the information about the actual network prefixes. And when these are generated, they also just stay in the area. They are not propagated outside of the area that they were generated in. Now, additionally, we have this interesting phenomenon in IPv6 called a link local address. And so when we have neighbors that are talking to each other and forwarding data back and forth with each other, those IPv6 OSPF neighbors, they're actually using link local addresses to communicate with each other. And so there's an additional type of LSA that stays only on the segment. It never leaves the segment. So R6 and R8 would have these, these LSA types that I'm going to talk about here in a moment, advertise back and forth, but they would just stay right here. And the purpose of these LSAs, which are a type eight, and they're called link LSAs, as in link local for a link local address information, that's exactly what they have. And that way R6 and R8 can know about the link local address of the other devices on that same network segment because they are advertised just on that segment in link LSAs or an LSA type eight. So here's what I'd love to do. This topology that I currently have up for our lab is already baked, meaning all the interfaces are enabled for OSPF. So we have routes coming from the backbone area. We have inter area routes coming from the remote areas. So what I would love for us to do, and this is a hands-on lab, so I'd like you to do it along with me, is let's go take a router. In fact, let's just jump on R2 as an example. And we'll do some show IPv6 OSPF database commands to see that we have all these different LSA types. Then we can take a closer look at the LSA types eight, which include the link local information. So on our two's perspective, it's gonna have some for this segment and this segment that it's directly connected to, and that's it. So these link LSAs just stay on the local segment. They are not, with those link local addresses, they are not flooded across the entire area. They stay just on that link. And then we can also investigate an LSA type nine, which should have the prefixes. So if we look at the LSA type nines for area zero, we should see the prefixes, the networks for this guy, which is the 34 network, 24, 12, 13, also the one and the four regarding that portion of the address right there. Those should all be included in LSA type nines. They are the inter area prefix describing those networks in that area. So in the lab here on router two, let's do a show, let's do a few basic verification commands. Let's do a show IPv6 OSPF interface brief, just to make sure that OSPF is enabled. Sure enough, it's enabled on gig one zero and two zero. This shows us that on two zero, we are the DR and on gig one zero, we are the BDR. And if we did a show IPv6 OSPF neighbors, that'll show us our neighbors that we're adjacent with. 
So we're adjacent with R4, who's a DR. We're adjacent with R1, who's a BDR. And check out the router IDs. They still use, just like in OSPF version two, it still uses the highest IP address on a loopback unless you configure a router ID. If you don't have a loopback address when the OSPF version three comes up, it'll be the highest IP address on an active interface. So the router ID in IPv6, <laughs> thank goodness, it's not a 128-bit long number. It's a 32-bit long number, which looks a lot like an IPv4 address, but it's just a router ID. And now let's take a look at the OSPF database and examine those two new LSA types, eight and nine. So we'll do a show, IPv6, OSPF database, and we can do a question mark to get very granular, but we'll just press enter. And that'll show us the entire IPv6 link state database. So let me go ahead and scroll up a little bit. So right here, we have the router link states. That's the LSA type ones. Here we have the network link states. That's the LSA type twos generated by a DR. If we scroll down a little bit further, we have our LSA type threes, which they've renamed. We'll take a look at that in a separate nugget. We don't have any external routes yet, so we don't have any LSA type fours or fives yet, but we'll add those as we go along. And here is the LSA type eights. So these LSA type eights are gonna be unique from the router that you're currently looking at. So we are currently on R2, and let's go back to the topology just for a moment. So here's what we expect to see on R2. R2 is gonna have LSA type eights for itself regarding gig two zero, and gig one zero, the two network segments it's connected to. And we're, it's also expecting, we're expecting it to learn LSA type eights from R1 here, and also from R4 here. So there should be four LSA type eights from the perspective of R2. Two that are associated with gig two zero, one of its own, one from R1, and two of them that are associated with its gig one zero, one of its own, and then one coming up from R4. So now let's go back to the show IPv6 OSPF database and verify that we have those four. And back at the interface, sure enough, there's R2s. It generated those two. And then we have one that was generated by R1 and one that, that was generated by R4 because they all have link local addresses. And if we wanted to see those, we could just do something like a show IPv6 OSPF. <laughs> yeah, the hardest thing often is that when you're working with IP so long and we're typing in IP, 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 sometimes it's hard to add that additional V6 to get the information that we want. So show IPv6 OSPF database, we'll do a question mark, and to see the type eights, we're gonna use the keyword of link. That is the LSA for the type eight. So we'll type in link, and then we can also tag on the advertising router. So if we wanted to see the LSA type eight from R1, its router ID is 1111, <laughs> and I guess I should have put advertising router. I thought it, I just didn't write it down. So there we go. So now this is gonna show us from the IPv6 OSPF database, the LSA type eights, the link LSAs, only for the ones that were advertised by 1111. And again, this is from the perspective of R2, so there should only be one of them here. So we'll press enter, and there it is. This is R1, the advertising router, and what he's saying is, hey, here's my link local address. And that's the major purpose for this LSA type eight, is to communicate what that link local address is for that segment for the benefit of the other router or routers on that segment. And the other router was R4 that R2 is directly connected to. So if we did a show IPv6 OSPF database and said advertising router, the router ID of router four, that would show us R4's link local address. So these are the LSA type eights also right there, <laughs> helping to reinforce that, which is a new LSA type that IP version four's OSPF just has no need for and therefore it doesn't have. Now, the other LSA type that has been added with IPv6's OSPF is an LSA type nine. And the LSA type nine is has the prefix information that used to be carried or still is carried for IP version four in the LSA type ones and twos. Now it's in the LSA type nines in the area. So if we have five or six networks in an area, we should see five or six LSA type nines for each of those networks. So in this topology for area zero, let's count the networks that we've included. In this topology, we've got that guy, which is the 12, the 34 network, the 13 network, the 12 network, the 24 network. So one, two, three, four, plus this one, plus this one. So there should be, that represents six networks. There should be six LSA type nines, these intra area prefix LSAs that point out each of those networks. So we can do a show IP OS, so we can do a show IPv6 OSPF database and verify that. So back on R2, let's do a show IPv6 OSPF database and we'll go all the way to the bottom. 
And here we have the intra area prefix link states, and that is the LSA type nines. And as we look at those, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And some of the interesting pieces here is that if we have a designated router for a segment where there's no other OSPF speaker, it's going to show up with a link ID of zero. So we know that R4 and also R1 both have a segment where there's no other speaker. They are the DR. And for these other networks, it's going to be the DR's responsibility for generating this LSA type 9 to describe the actual network prefix itself. So the DR is doing double duty here. The DR, if there's a multi-axis segment, is generating an LSA type 2, a network LSA, saying, hey, here's all the routers connected. But it would also be generating this LSA type 9 describing this network. So based on this output, we would expect that R3, because there's values here in the link ID, that R3 is a designated router on at least two segments based on these LSAs. Let's take a look. So we'll make a road trip over to R3 and do a show IPv6, OSPF interface brief. And I'm expecting him, yeah, sure enough, it's a DR twice on 4 slash 0 and gig 1 slash 0. And it's got a full adjacency on each of those network segments. So we're going to have more opportunity to practice and look at the LSAs. But in this video in lab, I wanted to introduce two specific new LSAs that didn't exist with IPv4's OSPF. And that is an LSA type 8, which is identifying the link local addresses. And it stays on the segment between the routers. It's not propagated throughout the area, it's just for that local segment. And then the LSA type 9, which is describing the actual prefixes in that area, also called the prefix LSA or the intra area prefix LSA, that's describing the networks in that area. So thanks for joining me for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.